Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Deepa Gupta, your PSM faculty, and today we'll be discussing box and whisker plot. Now, from the box and whisker plot, the three types of the questions are asked in the examination. The first is that you have to identify the given plot. Second, you have to solve some problems and the numericals based on the concepts of its interpretation. And the third is that you have to identify that what type of given a data is, whether it's a symmetrical or asymmetrical distribution. So, how we are going to identify the box and whisker plot? It is looking like this. You can say that in the center there is the box and on the sides there is the whisker. So by this we can identify that it is box and whisker plot. Now question can come in your mind that are we have other type of plots also? You are very right. Yes, we are having few other type of plots also and we should be able to differentiate those plots. So question is that what they are? It can be forest plot and how you are going to identify the forest plot that in this on one side we are having the ID of the study. Then we are having the center, the line of no effect. And we are having the interpretation, what parameter we are calculating, either the odds ratio, relativist, or the standard error. And we are having the 95% confidence interval values. So this is forest plot. We can also have the funnel plot and how it looks like. It looks like a funnel where the boundaries of the funnel are corresponding to 95% confidence interval values. We can also have the stem and leaf a plot and how it appears like this that here we are having the main branch like a stem and we are having the other branches like the leaf and always remember that in the stem and leaf plot always key is given at the end which help us in interpretation of this stem and leaf plot. We can also have the tree diagram and it looks like this where we are having the possibility of occurrence of events. So these are the different graphs which are commonly asked in examination. So if I say identify the given a graph, so this is forest plot. This appears as funnel plot. It is your tree diagram. This is box and whisker plot and it is your stem and leaf plot. Now the second component, how we are going to have interpretation. Now interpretation is done like quartile distribution because this box and whisker plot is based on quartile distribution concept. And what is quartile distribution concept means here the values are distributed in four equal parts by three intersections. So the lower end of the box, it is corresponding to your first quartile. Upper end of the box is corresponding to the third quartile. The lower end of the whisker, it is the minimum value. Upper end of the whisker is maximum value. And the values between the first and the third quartile is your interquartile range. And the line inside the box is corresponding to your second quartile that is none other than median value. So this is how we can have the interpretation of box and whisker plot. Now if you say that how much percentage of the values are corresponding in each uh, quartile. So the first quartile between the minimum value and the first quartile range it is covering the 25% between the first quartile and the second quartile it is again 25% second and third quartile it is again 25% beyond the third quartile again 25% thus the total is 100%. Now here very commonly they ask how much percentage of the values are between the first and the third quartile means in the interquartile range and it is total of 50%. So this is the basic concept how we do the interpretation of box and whisker plot. So based on this, if you try to solve the one a numerical that is commonly asked in examination based on this concept. Now while recording the weight of 
300 students in a college. It was noted that weight corresponding to the first quartile value was 45 kilogram and the third quartile value was 55 kilogram. Now calculate the number of the students coming in interquartile range. So in this question, we had identified our keywords. The keywords are the total students are 300. The first quartile value is corresponding to 45 kg and the third quartile value is corresponding to 55 kgs. Now we can just imagine our box and whisker plot. So first quartile value, it is corresponding to 45 kilogram. The third quartile value is corresponding to 55 kilogram. So what they are asking, they are asking the number of the candidates between first and third quartile, that is your interquartile range. And we know that it is covering the 50% of the values. Now here, be very attentive. Now the question says that calculate the number of the students. This is a very, very important catchword and a success mantra for your examination that you have to read the question very carefully. You're not going to mug up the answers. You should know the concept because if they ask that what is the percentage of the students in interquartile range, your answer will be 50%. But here what they are asking, the number of the students, it means it should be 50% of this total 300. It means the 150 students are coming in this interquartile range. So your answer is 150. In another exam, they can ask the percentage of the values or the percentage of the students, your answer should be 50%. In Next exam, they can ask what are the percentage of the students in less than a first quartile range or having the weight less than 45 kilogram. It will be the 25% of 300 means 75 students. How many students will be having the weight more than 55 kilograms at the third quartile? Again, 25% of the 375. So like that, that any question or any portion they can ask. So always remember, even a change in the single word in the question, the answer will change. So try to understand the concept. Don't try to mug up the answer. That should be your very, very important success mantra in the examination. Now, another uh, point is that how we are going to identify the symmetry. Now, for this, you have to see the location of the box and the location of the line inside the box. Now, if the box is appearing like in the middle of the whisker and the line it is appearing to be the center of the box, then it is your normal distribution pattern looking like a typical Gaussian curve. And we should be knowing that what is the relationship between the mean, median and mode in all these distributions. So we know that in the normal distribution pattern, all are the same means the mean is equal to median that is equal to mode. Now, if the line in the box, it is towards the lower side, or we can say the whole of the box is shifted towards the lower side, means the maximum values are towards the lower side, then the curve what we are getting with the long tail towards the right side, it is your positive skewed deviation or right skewed deviation. And we know that in this, the relationship between the mean, median and mode, that mean is maximum followed by median, it is followed by mode. But if the line in the box, it is towards an upper side, or we can say the box is shifting towards an upper side, then the maximum values are towards an upper end. And if you try to plot a curve, that is giving a long tail towards your left side and that is your negative skewed or the left skewed deviation. And what is the relationship? It is the opposite to right skewed means the mean is the lowest followed by median followed by mode. So in the normal distribution pattern, all three are same. In the right skewed or the positive skewed, the mean is maximum and in the negative skewed or the left skewed, the mode is maximum. Another point we have to remember that many times the box and whisker plot is given in a horizontal direction, but sometimes the examiner can test the question 
and can give this plot in a vertical fashion also. So you might be confusing in having the interpretation, but it is very simple. Now what the rule of thumb you have to remember that you have to imagine that this box and whisker plot has been rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degree. Remember this rule that it has been rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degree. So what it means that your upper end will be the maximum values, the lower end should be the minimum values and the lower end of the box is corresponding to your first quartile and the upper end of the box is corresponding to your third quartile. And when we know all these, now the interpretation is quite simple. If I say that try to identify the symmetry in this given plot. Now in the A, you can say that the line in the box, it is towards an upper side. So maximum values are towards an upper side. So this is your left skewed deviation. Now in the B, the maximum values are towards the lower side because the line in the box, it is towards the lower side. So it means the mode is lowest. It is your right skewed deviation. And if the line in the box, it is appearing to the center in the graph C. So this will be your normal distribution pattern. So in this way, in the vertical box and whisker plot also, we can have the calculation and interpretation same like what we were doing in horizontal plot. Based on this concept, another question was asked, what is not true about the given image? And here, first of all, we have to identify that what plot this is. And we can very well say that it is box in the center with a whisker, so it is a box, box and whisker plot. Now second, we have to identify that what is the distribution pattern, whether it's a normal distribution or skewed or right or left skewed. Although for your help, they had already given you the skewed deviation. And you can see that long tail of the curve is towards the left side. So this is none other than the left skewed or the negative skewed deviation. And now we very well know that what is the relationship between the left uh, skewed deviation in mean, median and mode that mean is lowest followed by the median followed by mode. So while reading the question, all these things should flesh in your mind. So you had come to the conclusion, it is a left skewed deviation, you know the relationship, now see the options. It is a negative skewed, yes, it is a negative skewed deviation. It is a positive skewed, no. So this is not true. Mean is less than the median, yes, it is the feature of the negative skewed deviation. Mean is less than the mode. Yes, it is also a feature of a negative skewed or the left skewed deviation. So here the correct answer to this that is not true for this given image is your positive skewed deviation. So these are few important points about box and whisker plot very commonly asked in the examination. So with these words, myself, Dr. Deepa Gupta signing off. Stay safe, stay healthy and be successful in your coming life. Bye-bye. Take care.